This CoreCon training video segment is going to be exploring another feature under procurement called purchase orders or POs. A purchase order is a way of recording a committed cost for future purchases. It reflects the negotiated unit price for items. It is different from a subcontract in that it does not have retainage or holdback and it also does not have a change process. So for that reason, purchase orders are usually related to materials only. At times there may be some services that do not require the tracking of retainage or holdback. These may be included. A few reminders about purchase orders is that a purchase order needs to be marked approved and have a status date before bills can be applied to it. Also, the companies referenced on a purchase order should already be listed in your project directory, although when entering a purchase order manually, they can be added on the fly. Multiple bills can reference a single purchase order. This comes in especially handy if you have multiple partial deliveries. A purchase order does appear as a committed cost transaction in the project analytics if it is marked approved and has a status date. We're going to explore three ways of adding a new PO and then show how to edit an existing PO. To get started, we're under the projects module. We already have a project selected and we're in the procurement features. We're going to go to purchase orders and across the actions and let's click add manually. We're going to give this an issue date. A PO number has defaulted because the numbering structure has been set up in the global settings. If you're using purchase order types and have set those up in global settings, that will also appear. Usually a purchase order would be created in pending status sent to the vendor or supplier for signature, but in this case, we're going to go ahead and mark this approved. We're also going to give this a status date and a reminder date. PO subject. We'll select the vendor and contact. We'll select the issued by and authorized by. We can add a lot of default fields so it'll fill in for us manually. For example, we'll put in the estimated delivery date, the job cost code, tax code, resource, and so on. As we add the items to the detail section, these will default. Because we filled in these default line item values, some of these filled in for us. We can also import items into the detail from the labor item, the equipment item, or the work item in the cost database, from an estimate, from anticipated costs, or from job cost codes directly. Then we'll click Save. At this point, usually, you would come down to the linked files and either drag and drop or add or link existing a document to show the quote you received from the supplier or vendor. Also note that Corcom will alert you if insurance has expired. Let's go to Actions and then send the PO to the supplier. It fills in the contact name, company, and email address. Here's a preview of what that purchase order would look like in the email. And then just click Send Email. The second way of adding a new purchase order is by importing it from Excel. The option is under Actions, the second one, Import from Excel. Before we do, I just wanted to show you where I get this template from. If you go to the Help Articles, and then to Corcon Import Options from Microsoft Excel, down to the Procurement section, and then to Purchase Orders. This article has detailed instructions how to import these spreadsheets. It also has the database tables and fields that you can use as column headings when you import this, and there is a sample import template with sample data. I've already prepared one. 
A couple reminders about importing from Excel. Do you need a unique purchase order number? The project number does need to does need to match exactly as does the prime contract. The supplier company also needs to be added to the project directory and the cost codes must also be already included in the, that project. You can also see that I'm importing multiple lines for a single purchase order. To do this, the purchase order must match on all those lines and use the sequential item number to communicate to Corcon that these are separate lines. Once the import template is ready, save and close. Back to Corcon, to purchase orders, over to actions and import from Excel. Click choose file. You can see the import template we just created and click open. All the records imported successfully. Back to the PO list. The third way to add a new purchase order is to copy from an existing purchase order. You can copy purchase orders from other projects. The additional methods that you see are going to be covered in other training videos. But let's go do this last add PO by copying from an existing PO. We're going to go in, select a project and a vendor and a PO and click next. We do have the option to select all or any of the line items from that PO. A new PO number has defaulted with the current date. Move that back a little bit and then we'll mark it approved and give it a status date. Link any existing related files and click finish. Again, you'd want to come down and add a quote or other information related specifically to this purchase order. If you wanted to print any of these purchase orders, go to reports, PO detail. There's a basic default purchase order Corcoran provides. Your logo will appear here. This can also be emailed right from within that same menu. Purchase order can also be edited. There's two parts to the edit. One is the header section, the top. We'll just click the edit button, make changes as necessary. And then click save and close. You also have the section under the PO items. You can click edit, edit in summary. Quantities would probably be one that you'd edit on a purchase order copied from another project. And you can also edit at the individual line item by clicking on the description. And you'll see the information here as well. And click close. If you'd like to know more about this topic, we encourage you to go to your help articles, to leads and projects, down to procurement, Go to the purchase order overview article. There's additional information as well as the information covered in this training video available.